Meg Cabot grew up in Bloomington, Indiana, a very simple, very hot town, but her life was anything but simple. Meg had a family of alcoholics, so she was a very unhappy child growing up. She once said in an interview the one thing that she learned from her childhood was not to drink and not to have kids, since she was an unhappy child, so that puts her off on having children of her own. She often went to the public library in search of refuge from not only the heat, but also her life. It was there in the bookshelves that she found the classics, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee and Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bront. That's when Meg Cabot realized the one thing that really made her happy. Books. She didn't let her father telling her that she was going to be a failure at life get her down, at least not until Meg became a teenager, flunked algebra twice, and then decided to cut her own bangs. But even after all that, Meg Cabot still went after what she loved, what would make her happy. She didn't know what that was at first, at first going to New York to become an illustrator like her mom. But for whatever reason, maybe fate, she failed miserably at that, so she had to turn to writing instead. But it wasn't until the day after her father's funeral that she tried to get published first. And while it may not have worked out right away, pretty soon, it did. The book I read by Meg Cabot, Abandon, is about the main character, Pierce, who knows what it's like to die and knows what happens after you die because she's died herself. And while she was dead, she met John, the ruler of the underworld. But Pierce didn't stay dead. She came back to life, and now, two years later, she's trying to make a fresh start on Island Hisu, which was originally called Island of Bones. But even here, John finds her, making it impossible to make that fresh start. Escape from the realm of the dead is impossible when someone there wants you back. Most of Meg Cabot's books are in the romance genre, and a lot of them are dedicated to her husband, Benjamin. She puts her own love story into her books, and in the book Abandoned, she shows through the characters, Pierce and John, how love can come in the most unexpected of places, but be the strongest love ever known. Pierce and John are finally happy together, and once Meg Cabot met her husband, she probably felt that way too. Happy. Meg Cabot married her best friend, someone she loved with all her heart, and someone who makes her truly happy. And Meg and her husband Benjamin will continue to make each other happy, and she'll continue to put their love story into her books, showing her readers that happiness in life isn't always that easy to get, and even harder to hold on to, but once you have it, you'll, and you're really happy, you'll hold on to that happiness. Forever and always.